Hey everybody in internet land and social media land. Appreciate you tuning in one more time. What I'm gonna do is attempt to speak to you as intelligently as I can with a really short vocabulary about nozzles, percentage over, liters per minute, flow rates, and spray orifice manufacturing techniques. I know that kind of sounds like a lot and I actually got that straight. I'm impressed, I hope you are too. So first things first, uh, percentage over is kind of the new term these days. It used to be whole size. People would call it and they want some five by 18s or five by 24s. That's all gone by the wayside now. That's kind of been a 12 valve thing. VP44 thing, I, I guess as well. Percentage over might be kind of more cool, although it's not exactly the same for every manufacturer. I want to explain to you how we use it. So if you've got a nozzle and in its factory configuration flows 20 liters of air per minute on this little gizmo right here, 100% over for simple math would just be 40 liters of air per minute. So what I've got here is four different 12 valve nozzles, 94, 98, 12 valve stuff. I'm gonna show you the difference in how the holes were made, how they're treated, what the difference is between like a really nice EDM and a horrible EDM, uh, factory stuff versus like some extrude hone stuff. And I'm going to show you the liters of air increased versus their percentage number. So I hope this kind of makes sense of it all. Um, a lot of people really see that to be kind of a gray area and it's a super common question. So follow along and we'll see if we can explain this for you. So what I've got here is just a Gilmont AccuCal zero to 100 liters of air per minute. Everybody that's using one of these is using a different shop supply air pressure to it. So if I tell you that my injectors are 50 liters of air per minute and they go to another house, they're gonna have a different air supply going to that. It's going to register different. It's no different than say going to one dyno, leaving the state and expecting to make the exact same horsepower at another shop. It's not gonna happen. So what I'm gonna do now is go through four different nozzles and these four different nozzles, like I say, they're all 94, 98, 12 valve things. And for common rail guys, that seems boring, but it's the exact same rule. So follow along, pay attention. Now this nozzle right here flows 53, 54 liters of air per minute. From the factory application up to 54, that is about a 50% improvement over the factory. So the next one in size would be our uh, stage three. And this one is gonna register at 60 liters of air per minute. 60 liters of air per minute is uh, actually right about 70% over its factory application. Um, the reason why I kinda wanna just uh, explain that is we used to call them stage one, two, threes, and fours. We still do that. It's in the price catalog as stage one, as stage two, as stage three, stage four. We give you timing specs and what to expect for power out of them. But in the common rail land, nobody speaks in that way because everybody's speaking in percentage over now. And that's great. We just want to uh, kind of blend it all together and make sure that everybody kind of understands what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. The next one, this is actually a five by 18. And that's what people used to call them was five by 18. So this is a really nice EDM part. And you'll hear this one, it's gonna move a lot more air. This one's right at 93 liters of air per minute. That's about 160% over. The next one is an EDM also, but the EDM work is super crude. This is something we do not sell. I'm going to show you visuals of this in just a minute. Even though this is the same per se hole size, if you shove a pin gauge in it, it's gonna pin gauge the same as this one. This one outflows this one by quite a little bit. 88 liters a minute here versus 93 liters a minute here. And in percentage, that's about a 10% jump. So just to confirm, that's what I like about the air. Doesn't matter what uh, temperature the calibration oil is. Yep. The result, I can come back in in five more years and as long as that shop supply is still set to the same, which it's locked, it's always gonna give me the same result. With some of the really high dollar calibration units, they'll use calibration oil. 
depending on how warm or how cold that calibration oil is, the same nozzle will actually flow a little bit different in the same day. So if you build a set of nozzles at eight in the morning when the calibration oil is kind of cold, make them to whatever your spec is, come back and check those things when the calibration oil is warm, and obviously they're gonna flow a little bit faster and a little bit more. So the same set of injectors would then be set at a different calibration point. Um, I like this thing, I've been using this for about 10, well, 15 years now. And you'll see right next to it, we've kind of got a backup plan. That's not really a backup plan. That one's got a bigger, larger, heavier ball in it, and that's for anything 100 liters up. And that's for like the really, really, really big stuff. So some of the 5x25 type stuff and some of the newer 7-hole common rail nozzles and even some of our 5-hole common rail nozzles are getting to where they have to use that guy. And those are going to be in like, well, in common rail stuff, those start down at like 18, 20 liters of air per minute, and we're getting to be about 700% over in common rail using that flow meter. All right, so with this information, I want to head over to the borescope, meet you over there in just a minute, and explain some more stuff to you. Well, if you've managed to stick through the video this long, I might as well try and give you something cool to see. So I've got those same four nozzles. I've already explained to you about the percentage over and how many liters of air they flow. Now what I wanted to show you is actually how the hole was constructed. So constructed, constructed. I said that right. Just took me three times. Basically, I'm going to use my little pointer like Mrs. Krabopoulos did on Bart Simpson's little show. But uh, this right here, spray orifice spray orifice spray orifice and you'll see that that's kind of tilted to one side and that's because this nozzle was actually built for the 12 valve that injector sits outside the valve cover and it points toward the center of the bowl so it has to kind of get that tilt in there to get the atomization and the spray pattern in the bowl now right down in here you'll see a little bit of contamination or something that's kind of ugly by the time we process this with extrude hone we'll have changed this we'll have cleaned this up Whenever we get brand new nozzles in, they've always got some sort of uh, element like that in there. And the reason for that is like when they dip them in the calibration oil and whatnot, there's always some sort of moisture in there. And uh, we end up just seeing a little bit of brown staining. But by the time I show you the next one, that'll all be washed out of there and gone clean. So again, this is 54 liters of air per minute. And we see just a little tiny bit of EDM piling up right there from when that wire kind of broke through. 54 liters a minute at 50% over. And if I've ever sent you guys a picture of a nozzle with contamination, this is the machine that we use to take that picture. All right, so like I said, by the time we process it with some extrude hone, you can see that there's just a little bit of WD-40 down inside there. We use WD-40 because it is water dispersing. Um, and we can store them for long periods of time on the shelf without seeing any rust. So that's why we use that. But here you'll see that instead of the EDM piling up right there, we'll see that it's starting to break over and it's kind of starting to radius. The hole is about six tenths of one millimeter that the fuel sprays through. So that's kind of like the rifle's barrel is that six tenth. And we've already polished that. So we're starting to clean up the surface finish of it by a cleaner surface finish means that the fluid, when it goes through there, especially under pressure, there's less restriction and it atomizes a lot better when it breaks on the outside. The plume is just nice and beautiful. It's pretty, it, it, it burns very fast. Um, what we're gonna be looking at next, a little bit bigger stuff. This is an nozzle that we have made. And this nozzle is a five by 18 that's not been processed with any hone yet. It's fairly large. Let me get down in there. Now the nozzle, the sack itself is starting to get to be kind of small compared to the holes. So we're starting to see where the holes are kind of coming on top of one another. We've still got that aim for that 12 valve piston bowl. Right now you can still see there's EDMing just inside the spray orifice. You can see where the EDMing is kind of piled up on the inside right there. It's definitely not as pretty as the last one, but this one is bigger. So for 12 valve guys that are well over 1200 horsepower, this is the nozzle we would start with. They would extrude hone to whatever the customer's desire was above this and give it that same polished finish as I showed you in the last nozzle. Again, this nozzle five by 18 and it's factory finished just the way it is. That's sitting at uh, 93 liters of air per minute, and that's about 160, 160% over stock. So, last but not least, my grand finale. 
This is something that's super popular in the aftermarket tractor pulling. And in the tractor pull land, the bigger the hole, the better it is. This kind of stuff is not what you want in your daily driver ever. A couple of things that I want to point out to you. So whether they used carbide or tungsten or, or wire to go through an EDM, what happened is that come through this hole right here, it's aiming up towards where the needle valve would be and it tagged just the opposite side of the inside the nozzle. Later on in life, a crack will develop right here and it will run right down the face of that and it will split the nozzle up. So looking at this, you're probably wondering what the heck I'm trying to show you. The EDMing was done way too fast, way too hot, and it piles up just massive amounts of steel that used to be nozzle material. And I've already tried to clean this up and we weren't able to clean it up. So you're looking at something that's actually better than it was after I paid to have it EDM the first time. Um, you know, sometimes you try things and they just don't work out. This is something that we've never sold to a customer because of this little bore scope. Uh, I tried to work with the guy that was EDMing them for us and get him to slow things down and make them a little bit nicer and he just wasn't able to uh, see my point, I guess. Like I say, in tractor pull land, this might be acceptable when you're a wide open throttle and all the smoke in the world is acceptable. All that smoke's not acceptable in the world. We need to keep things clean, we need to keep them right, we need to keep them tight. Um, the other problem with this big EDM stuff is the flow rates vary drastically. This same batch would vary like five to 10 liters of air per minute. So trying to get each hole to make the same horsepower is next to impossible because each injector nozzle is wanting to flow different amounts of fluid. Your motor makes horsepower generated off of the fluid that it can burn. So if you can't gauge how much each piston is gonna see, you might have one piston making 200 horsepower and the next piston's only gonna make 150. The poor crankshaft and rods, that's a tough life to live in. So whenever we build something, we try to make sure that from the nozzle all the way out to the end of the balancing period, everything is as close to zeros as possible. So when they hit the crankshaft, each one of those connecting rods sees the same workload and the motor lives its most happy, longest life. So I hope this, along with some of the information about percentages and liters a minute was some good information for you. If we can help you further, we've got a chart that we could actually, matter of fact, if enough people ask about it, I'll print the chart up and we'll post it on our Instagram and our uh, Facebook page. Might even post it on the YouTube. Um, if anybody needs a copy of that, you could possibly contact me and uh, I might be able to get you one. Anyway, Lenny Reed, Dynamite Diesel, 208-209-3214, www.dynamitediesel.com. Hmm.